Welcome back, guys. This is an updated video on ticker symbol blue, which is Bluebird Bio for those of you who are um, not aware. And uh, what I want to cover in this video is some recent catalysts and some upcoming catalysts in the near future, um, particularly uh, quarter one 2023 for Bluebird Bio. Um, I'm going to talk about some things that had happened in quarter three. Um, and if you're if you followed the stock or if you're invested in the stock, then you'll know most of what I'm going to say. But if you're new or unsure, uh, I hope I clarify some information for you. So we'll start off by going to the FDA's website and on this page, which is their approved cellular and gene therapy products. There are currently 24 approved products. Um, per the FDA, and two of them belong to Bluebird Bio, being Skysona and Zinteglo. Now, these two approvals came um, in August and September of 2022, so they're, they're new. They haven't really monetized any um, of those treatments yet. We're still not even sure if they had treated a patient yet. But what we do know is those two approvals came with two priority review vouchers, which Bluebird Bio had just monetized one for $102 million, which shored up their cash runway for a while. It was looking kind of bleak, and that was mainly what the Bears' um, uh, thesis was on why Bluebird Bio was going to they were going to fail. Um, they just really did not have the cash. Um, I know there was a bunch of moves in the C-suite of Bluebird Bio, and they were running out of cash pretty quickly. But those priority review vouchers came at the right time, and they had also exercised some ATM shares, which also put some money in the bank. Now, we know from the quarter three um, press release on their, their earnings, their quarterly earnings, that their cash burn was going to be roughly $90 million in quarter four, um, mainly uh, focusing on setting up their qualified treatment centers, their QTCs, which is a good expense. Uh, there's we have we have the the biggest competitor that we have right now going back and forth between bulls and bears is CRISPR. Um, they're also working on a beta thalassemia and sickle cell uh, treatment. However, they have not set up any qualified treatment centers yet, which is going to take a big big chunk of money to do that. Also, they um, they're in a uh, uh, contract with Vertex. So they're only forking out 40% of the program costs, but they're also only getting 40% of the profits from those treatments if they get an FDA approval for it. So moving on, um, let's talk about the recent uh, clinical hold release that was on their sickle cell, low cell um, clinical trials for patients under 18. That was huge. Um, to really understand how big that was, you have to first understand why the FDA would put a clinical hold on any part of a clinical trial. So here, uh, the placement on, of a hold on a clinical trial indicates that the FDA is doing its job of protecting clinical trial participants by stopping a trial when there's an indication of a serious problem. It means the FDA officials saw a reason to be concerned and halted the clinical trial until they can ensure that potential benefits exceed potential risks. So now with the FDA lifting that partial clinical hold off the Lovo cell clinical trials, we know that the FDA had examined for a year that clinical hold was placed back in December of 2021, I believe. Um, but so for, the, for an entire year, they had combed through all the data that Bluebird had on the Lovo cell trial for patients under 18. And finally came out and said that they believe that, number one, it's safe to proceed with the clinical trial for patients under 18, and number two, the benefits of that clinical trial exceed the potential risks. So to me, and now this is just my own opinion, I'm not a, an expert, to me, it shows that the FDA has great confidence in Lovo cell. So moving on, here's the press release with Bluebird Bio talking about the, uh, the clinical hold being released. And in their statement, they had said, we are very pleased to have, to have addressed 
the FDA's questions and resolved the partial clinical hold. And that was Richard Colvin that had said that he's the chief medical officer. We are working closely with study investigators and clinical trial sites to resume enrollment and treatment of pediatric and adolescent patients in the first quarter of next year. So that this was back from December 19th, 2022. So now this is January 23. So they should start enrolling adolescents back in, into the clinical trials this quarter, which is great news. So moving on, now we're here. This is the uh, press release from where they had sold their priority review voucher. Here you can see it. they sold it for $102 million. Now they still have another one that they can sell for anywhere from 100 to 110 million dollars. I know they were hoping to get 110 million for the first one. However, they walked away with 102 million in the grand scheme of things. 8 million dollars when we're talking about 100 million dollars really isn't all that much money. So they were able to monetize that and like I said that shores up the cash runway and offsets the um the 90 million cash burn for quarter four setting up the qualified treatment centers. Now moving on, what I want to talk about here is um, here they state that the, the company has made significant progress on its first U.S. commercial launch and remains on track for first apheresis in the fourth quarter of this year two months post approval 27 patients have been init have initiated benefit verification and approximately one third of those patients have progressed to prior authorization now prior authorization is where they the doctor has submit has to submit paperwork to the insurance to met the payer to um, authorize the, the payment for that treatment. Now, they also go on to state, while we anticipate that not all patients will proceed with treatment, these early indicators demonstrate significant demand across a rare disease population. Now, this is for Zinteglo. Now, I want to take a second here and pause and say that Zinteglo and Skysona, I'm, I'm thrilled that Bluebird Bio had got the approval for these. These are ultra rare diseases, okay? So it's not like they're going to be raking in tons of money, even though every patient they treat is going to be either $2.8 million or $3 million per patient. You know, and I hope the people, the patients that really need this treatment get it and it's kudos to Bluebird Bio for doing what they, they have achieved and accomplished so much for being so small and having everything just stacked against them. So I'm happy and I'm, I'm really thrilled on, on the way that they're handling themselves and the path they're going down. But what, but what I really want to point out here is the qualified treatment centers. I don't think many people have an understanding on how important this is. Um, how how long it takes to set these up, and they're already chugging along, getting it done. So here's on this bulletin, Bluebird has completed activation of all Wave 1 Qualified Treatment Centers, QTCs, and the company's QTC network is on track to reach low double digits by the end of the year, which is 2022, as they had previously guided. Now, in addition to the company's planned list of QTCs, Bluebird has received inbound requests for inclusion in its QTC network from more than 30 adult and pediatric institutions, demonstrating eagerness to treat. Bluebird's hemoglobinopathies QTC footprint is expected to scale to 40 to 50 centers by the end of 2023 and is designed to maximize the beta thalassemia launch. And here's the big, the most important part, and to prepare for the potential future launch of Lobo cell for sickle cell disease pending regulatory approval. So keep in mind now as they're setting up their QTCs, they're, they have Lovo cell in mind. Now, and it, they're not reaching out to hospitals and institutions to beg them to come into their network to treat patients. They clearly state that 30 institutions or hospitals, or medical facilities had reached out to them wanting to be part of their qualified treatment center network. 
So that is fantastic. So by the end of 2023, they'll have 50 centers online. Well, up to 50 centers online, which is fantastic. So that's 50 different places across the United States, almost one in every state, to treat patients, not only with Skysona and Zinteglo, but also with Lovo cell for sickle cell disease. So they are already do, doing all the groundwork, preparing for the approval from the FDA for Lovo cell so that when it does become approved, which in my mind, there's no doubt about it, it will be approved. They can hit the ground running and they can market it immediately and start treating patients immediately. Moving on, let's talk about sickle cell, okay? So here, this is huge. So sickle cell disease causes $1.5 billion in lost wages and productivity each year in the U.S. alone, according to the first study of its kind. That comes to more than $650,000 lost over the average working life of a person living with the painful genetic order. So it's not only is the lifespan shorter, these people that suffer with sickle cell, they suffer with such extreme amounts of pain. They're always in the hospitals, in the emergency rooms, and all they're doing is getting getting treatments and not being cured. They're getting they're, the doctors are basically putting a band-aid on it. They're 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 treating the symptoms, they're not treating the actual disease. Moving on over here, the global sickle cell disease treatment market was one point three five billion dollars in two thousand nineteen. So in two thousand nineteen payers had paid one point three five billion dollars to treat patients that are suffering from sickle cell disease. The global impact of COVID-19 has been unprecedented and staggering with sickle cell disease treatment witnessing a positive demand shock across all regions amid the pandemic. Based on their analysis, the global market will exhibit a growth of 6.3% in 2020. The market is projected to grow from $1.44 billion in 2020 to $7.71 billion in 2027. So the payers are going to be paying more and more and more every year to treat patients with sickle cell. So what Lobo Cell will come in and do is they will give their gene therapy treatment to these patients. And we don't know what the price is going to be per treatment. But what we do know is it is going to save insurance companies a significant amount of money by choosing to go with Lovo Cell instead of paying emergency room bills over and over and over over the course of a patient's lifetime. So data and statistics on sickle cell disease, and I'm sorry I'm just focusing on the sickle cell disease because this is what I got into Bluebird Bio for. Like I said, I'm thrilled for Skysona and Zinteglo, and I'm glad that those patients are going to get the treatment that they need if they can convince their insurance companies to pay for them. But sickle cell was the holy grail for me. I, I moved over from CCXI chemocentrics, and sickle cell, I know, um, is, is a huge. It, p people hurt from it. And it's something that really, really needs to be cured. So according to the, here, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, sickle cell affects approximately 100,000 Americans. Sickle cell disease occurs among about one out of every 365 black or African American births. Sickle cell disease occurs among about one out of every 16,300 Hispanic American births. And about one in 13 black or African-American babies is born with the sickle cell trait. So what does that say? Out of every 365 black babies that are born, one is going to suffer with sickle cell. So it's never going to go away. I mean, if Lovo cell gets approved and they keep treating the patients with it, eventually the patient population will go to zero and they'll eradicate sickle cell disease altogether if it gets approved. And that's a big if to you. To me, 
the FDA really has no choice but to approve it. I mean, sickle cell disease needs this. All the patients that suffer with sickle cell disease needs this treatment. It's going to save insurance companies a ton of cash. And it's going to give the basically the, the black population a way better quality life. So sickle cell disease worldwide affects 250 million people. Now, I put this on here because I'm going to give you my opinion here in about a minute or two about where I think Bluebird Bio is, is headed. So 250 million people are affected globally, and that's according to the Nigerian Orthopedic Association. 250 million people are really begging for, for this. So now moving on. Here's the newest news. Bluebird Bio appoints Joseph Vitiglio as the chief business and legal officer. So what does his resume look like? Okay, it's pretty impressive. So he has been appointed the chief business and legal officer. Uh, Vitiglio brings more than 20 years of experience in the biopharmaceutical industry with expertise in licensing, collaborations, and mergers and acquisitions, financial transactions, FDA regulations, compliance, manufacturing, and quality operations for organizations at all stages of development. So I know a lot of people got excited when they seen that his resume highlights mergers and acquisitions. You know, being bought out by big pharma, you know, would would it, that's immediate money. Everybody's going to be thrilled. You know, you'll make you'll make a quick buck. However, I I kind of like the word licensing, and I really think that the market for Bluebird, going back here, showing you that sickle cell affects 250 million people worldwide. I believe if we get the FDA approval and we could move into um, Europe start there. Uh, get get the European Medicine Agency on 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 track. Approve us over there. Then go to Japan, and then obviously go to Africa, and just move all over the world. But we know that Bluebird Bio doesn't have the money to do that. But they can license it. They can license it to, to another company that has the money or is more interested in moving outside the United States. Because remember, unlike CRISPR, Bluebird Bio wholly owns worldwide rights to all their treatments. Nobody else owns any of the rights. They own all of it. So they can license it now, and I think licensing would be extremely lucrative. They would get an upfront payment. We're talking hundreds of millions of dollars. They would get milestone payments, and they would get royalties. Like I said, you can you can sell the company and make a quick dollar now, or they can slowly build the company and be worth more in the long run. That's my opinion. I'm looking for a licensing. Also, because I'm not a big fan of Andrew Obenchain, I don't think that he's really qualified to be running a company. Well, n not a company. L let me. I retract that. I don't think he's qualified to be running Bluebird Bio. He was in charge of Bluebird when we were in Europe, and he failed to gain any ground over there. Um, there was a boatload of cash burn, so they pulled out of Europe and focused solely on the United States, which I think is a it was a, a smart decision. Um, but I just don't think that Andrew Obenshain. Even, especially listening to all the, the calls um, and the um, seminars that he was at speaking. I'm just, I'm just not a fan. Um, but that that's just my opinion. But I don't think that he wants to sell because I think, I think he wants to make this his legacy. And I think that I don't think that he would, it, he would, let me just say, I don't think he would find another job as a CEO too easily. I'll just put it that way. So I'm excited and I'm looking for licensing deals moving forward. Um, you know, the, what I would love to see, honestly, and this is my opinion, is CRISPR um, 
get held up in an ADCOM, and the FDA denied him, and then Vertex jumped ship from CRISPR over to Bluebird to license um, LovoCell outside the United States. That would just put an ear from my left, or a smile from my left ear to my right ear, and all the bears that are on Bluebird Bio constantly trolling, um, constantly posting about CRISPR. Oh, that would just be that would that would make my day. So moving on, and this is why I this is what I'm going to point out now. This is so when when a company comes in to buy um, another company, uh, a merger or an acquisition, um, what they usually do is they usually take the the stock price. I believe it's on the 200 EMA um, and offer a premium. So whether it's a hundred percent or a 200 percent or a 300 percent, whatever the premium may be. Um, they offer it on that stock price. So looking at Bluebird right now, we know um, they have two approved gene therapies, which proves their platform. Um, they're going for a third one with LovoCell, which I believe is the, the, going to be Bluebird's holy grail. But if a company were to come in tomorrow, the, the, you're going to see $7.61. If they offered a 100% premium, you're looking at, what, $15.22? and uh, 22 cents. Um I, I just don't I just think Bluebird is worth more than fifteen dollars and twenty two cents. Uh that would put it at approximately a a billion dollars market cap. Um I just I, I really think that they're worth more than that. So moving forward in, in quarter one twenty three, if there was gonna be um an offer to, to buy them out, I really do believe that it's going to come shortly before or immediately after they file their BLA for uh, LovoCell. Um, the company is basically de-risked at this point. Bluebird had spent all their money. They had set, set up their QTCs. Uh, they have an experienced team that's going to fill out and file out a BLA for LovoCell, actually, according to Andrew Obenchain, it was the same team that had filed the BLAs for Zintaglo and Skysona, so they know how to navigate um, and communicate with the FDA on gene therapies. Uh, they're experienced, it, and they've proved it with, with two therapies already. Um, so, like I said, moving forward, I really hope to see a licensing deal, and we could slowly build up and not have an immediate buyout but if we do like i said i i see it coming immediately before or immediately after their bla submission which should be here within the next two months because they plan on filing their bla the first quarter of 2023 which we had already started so we have two and a half months left until they file it i really do believe that they're going to file it sooner than later um, if they file it sooner than later, get fast tracked approval. You know, we're looking at an approval somewhere in the beginning of summer. They could start rolling out Lovo cell to their QTCs and start treating patients immediately. By the end of 2023, what we're looking at right now is $7.61 a share, which I think is extremely low. We're all going to be wishing that it was back there so we could keep loading. And I, as I tell everybody, um, Bluebird is the only stock that I'm in right now. I am 100% invested in this company. I don't own shares of any other company. All my chickens are in one basket, or all my eggs are in one basket right now. And I really do see Bluebird Bio taking off and being the talk of 2023. Um, I had said to myself, this is going to be a year that I won't forget. And I had told it to many other people because being in blue right now at this price level, almost completely de-risked is, is truly amazing. I mean, they have two approved gene therapies. Their qualified treatment centers are online. They own uh, worldwide rights to all their treatments. Um, the partial clinical hold was removed, so we have confidence from the FDA that, that this is going to go. Uh, and I just, I, I don't know what else to say. I just really think that this is going to be the drug of the year. Lovo Cell will be the drug of the year. In December of 2023, they're going to say, hey, Bluebird Bio, Lovo Cell, it was, it was the drug of the year. And I, it's hard for me to say with CRISPR and Vertex, although I'd hate to see any company lose a boatload of money that they have invested into their 
products, but I really do see them being held up in in an ad com and which is going to slow you know they were supposed they were supposed to do a rolling submission first of all for their BLA they were supposed to start in November um and they hadn't even done that so some something's going on that they're not making us aware of uh I know they're being held in arc and there's just non-stop article after article trying to hype up CRISPR but I just you know that's just like the market and analysts they're saying that this is going to be this year is going to be just as bad as 2022 and how the feds are trying to fight inflation i i have a whole different viewpoint on that i'm not going to get into it because this is for blue but i just think all the analysts are wrong especially goldman sachs i wish i could see how many shares short on this company they are for having a three dollar price tag on bluebird that is absolutely insane and that analyst needs to get fired or start covering their short position immediately because they're going to get eaten alive man that like they to me they lost all credibility by by posting a three dollar price tag on bluebird bile that just blows my mind but anyways this is a long video i apologize i'm going to get off here now and uh good luck and happy new year to all you guys if you're invested in bluebird congratulations you made a great investment if you're not invested in bluebird yet and you're just looking to do some research i i encourage you to do your own due diligence and like i said i'm not a financial advisor and i'm not an expert i'm not a doctor i'm a lineman i build power lines but I've done an extensive amount of research on Bluebird, and I am quite comfortable being 100% invested in them, and I can't wait to see what this year brings us. Till the next time, have a great night, have a good year. Hope you have lots of health and many gains.